Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Michael Jackson. Welcome to The Bible Speaks Live. Once again, coming to you with a word that we pray will encourage your heart on this night, uh, praying that all is well between you and the Lord. We come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that he is the answer to all the problems that you may have. He is the answer to, he is the answer for the world today, actually. And so we come to you in his mighty and matchless name. Uh, we are coming to you live on Facebook. Also, we are streaming live on YouTube via the Google Hangouts app. And we are also streaming live on Spreaker.com. That is our podcast a partner. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. We have a host of other podcasts there uh, that will be that we know will be beneficial to your spiritual life. Amen. And so if you are if you are tuning in on YouTube, you will find, or you rather, if you are tuning in right now on on Facebook, you will find us on our uh, on our new uh, Bible Speaks Live page. You will find us streaming live there. Uh, so if you're there, uh, why not just um, share this page with someone so that someone else uh, may also be blessed uh, tonight. Uh, we're going to come to you with the Word of God tonight, uh, a word that uh, the Lord has put into our hearts. A word that uh, is necessary, a word uh, in due season, a word that is needed for all of us. Listen, the word of God is something that we all need. Uh, the word of God is not just for one individual or two individuals. The word of God is for all. So anytime that you can glean, anytime that you can get something from the word of God, uh, it is a good thing. All of the word is for all of us. We're going to pray and we're going to go right into uh, this word for tonight. Amen. Amen. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you. Lord, once again, you've allowed us to be in your presence. We pray for the next a few minutes, Lord Jesus, that your power and your presence, Lord Jesus, might be with us. As your word is opened up, Lord, I pray that those who are listening, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray that they will be moved, they'll be touched, they'll be encouraged. Lord, I pray that they may be drawn closer to you as they hear of these words on tonight. Lord, I pray that you might have your way. Do what only you can do. Lord, do not allow your word to return void. Lord, we know that your word will accomplish the purpose that it was sent out for. So Lord, have your way. Bless us now together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to come to you tonight from a very familiar book, very familiar book, the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms. And I'm going to come from the book of Psalm chapter number 84. Psalm 84, Psalm 84, there's much that we can learn from Psalm 84, but we're going to take it from verse number eight down to the end of the chapter. Psalm 84, starting in verse number eight. It says, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. Once again, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you tonight about divine realignment. Divine realignment. You know, as we walk in this world and do the things that we have to do, uh, we get dirty. We get dirty. We get stained. We get stained uh, by the world. We get uh, we there's a bit of pollution uh, that takes place uh, in our life. Things happen sometimes out of our control, beyond the scope of our control. And sometimes we just pick up dust from the ground that we walk on, spiritually speaking. Sometimes we just just bring in things to our life and, and we need to remove those things sometimes sometimes things in this world sort of like stick to us almost like velcro and sometimes we don't know how to get rid of these things and sometimes uh these things that happen uh in our lives sometimes they 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 stick to us and they cause us 
problems. Problems. Now, when you have a car, when you have a car, and we've all ridden in cars, and those who drive cars will know what I'm talking about. When you're sitting behind the wheel, and sometimes when you're in the driver's seat, if you're sensitive to it, and when you're in the passenger seat, if you're sensitive to it, you can tell when a car is sort of leaning over to the side. It's sort of leaning over to the side. Uh, it means that there is something that is wrong with the car. A sure sign that your car needs realignment. A sure sign that your car needs realignment is if you're driving and it sort of drags on one side. You sort of believe that you're driving straight, but the car is just dragging on one end. Another way that you can tell that your car needs realignment is the steering wheel vibrates. The steering wheel vibrates as you drive. That, that's a sure sign that your car needs to be calibrated and realigned. And another sign is uh, that when you're driving straight, uh, your steering wheel is not centered. So these are all signs that your car needs realignment. Realignment is going to put the car uh, back in the proper uh, place where it needs to be. It's going to level it off. It's going to cause it to drive properly. And in our spiritual life, in our spiritual life, we also sometimes find that we need realignment. We need a divine realignment. Because as I said, uh, things can go haywire. Things can go awry in this life sometimes. And we need to, we need to shake ourselves and get ourselves back to the place uh, where we need to be. A car mechanic will tell you that sometimes it, it, it sometimes just a, a simple bump, sometimes just a simple bump will cause the car to be off kilter. Many times little things that might just happen in our life can cause us to go off kilter. Uh, we lose our suspension uh, and we need realignment. And so we need to make sure that we are walking properly with the Lord. This whole idea, when we go down to uh, in Psalm 84 and this second part of verse number 11, where it says, no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. That whole idea of walking uprightly, that's the idea of being in proper alignment. Walking uprightly. That word upright in the Hebrew, it has several meanings. It means straight. It means straight. It means perfection and it means completion. Straight, perfect, complete. That's the idea of upright. And that is a picture of alignment. We need to be in proper alignment with the Lord. When we find ourselves in proper alignment, we will find things will go much, let me, it's easy to say easier, but Satan is going to be at us no matter what we do. But we will find things uh, will happen for us in a, in a better, in a better way. Now there was a point, there was a point in, in, in my life where my wife and myself, we were, we were, going to separate churches, just to give you an example of, of realignment versus alignment. We were going to separate churches. And though we both said that we were both doing the Lord's will, there was no, there, there was not a proper alignment. There was not proper alignment. God cannot get the most out of your ministry, he cannot get the most out of you as long as you remain unaligned. And to be aligned is simply means to bring into cooperation or bring into agreement with God. We need to put ourselves in total agreement with God. We need to cooperate with God. We cannot put our own agenda in front of God. No way, no how, it won't work. We need to come together in alliance. We got to bring ourselves in line with him. That's 
alignment. And many times we think that we're in alignment with the Lord, but we are in alignment with ourselves. Sometimes we ask the Lord to bless our activities, to bless our will, rather than Lord, what is your will? And Lord, bless it. You see, when we get it wrong, when we get it twisted that way, God is not, uh, God does not have to bless us at all. We need to be found in a place where God can bless us. And the only time that God can bless us is when we are properly aligned with him, properly aligned with him. Now, being properly, being properly aligned, being properly aligned is going to lead to several things in your life, in my life, in, in all of our lives, being properly uh, aligned, being properly aligned, number one, being properly aligned with the Lord, being in, in a place of agreement and cooperation with the Lord is going to lead to a proper elevation. Let me put it that way. Proper elevation. The Lord is going to, the Lord will be there to lift you up. It says in verse uh, number uh, 11 that the Lord God is a sun and a shield. That, that shield is talking about protection. Uh, shield, sun is talking about light and glory. He will be a sun and shield to those who walk uprightly. Second, uh, proper revelation. Proper re revelation. If you, when you align yourself properly with the Lord, he is able to teach you. He is able to reveal himself to you. He does, he, listen, the Lord will not reveal, is not going to reveal himself to those who are selfish, to those who want their will done and not his. He is not under any compunction to do anything for that person. He is a, he is a son and a shield to those who are walking uprightly, straight, in alignment. That's what the Lord will do. Third, when you are walking in proper alignment with the Lord, uh, there will be a there will be proper maturation. Maturation. In other words, you will grow. The Bible says that we need to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. You cannot grow properly if you are not straight. If you're not straight, you will grow crooked. And if you grow crooked, you're not really growing properly. You don't learn if you're growing in a offshoot kind of way. We need to make sure that we are properly aligned with the Lord. He will cause you to grow in his grace and his knowledge when we align ourselves with him. And that's talking about obedience. That is talking about obedience. Next, you know what? When you are properly aligned with the Lord, there will be proper, and it says right here, we already mentioned it, the shield, a shield. He will be a shield. So many times in the book of Psalms, we read that the Lord is our shield. He is our buckler. He is our high tower. He's the one that we can run to. And when we are properly aligned with the Lord, there will be proper insulation, insulation, protection. Now we know that there is already, we know, we know that the Bible says that there is a hedge around his people. We read that, we read about Job. There was a hedge around Job. And we'd like to think that there is a hedge around. Now, let's be honest. Sometimes God will allow that hedge to come down. Sometimes the enemy is allowed to do some things uh, in our lives. The Lord gives the enemy permission. But once again, what the enemy does not understand and what he will not, that the Lord allows the enemy to do, to, to have a certain uh, level, a certain measure of uh, power. That's not the right word, but he allows the enemy to, to have a certain uh, measure of power in our lives only to show him that he cannot have control of his people. The devil is not, cannot control God's people. And he get and the enemy can become frustrated, cannot do what he wants to do. He cannot do it. And so the proper insulation will be ours if if we are in proper alignment with 
the Lord. Proper alignment with the Lord. There will be a proper duration. Duration. That means you're going to make it to the end. Listen, listen, no matter what people tell you, no matter what you feel like, no matter what the devil may say to you, what he has said to you, you are going to make it. If the devil could kill you, he would have killed you already. The reason why he has not killed you already is because he cannot kill you. Proper duration. You will persevere unto the end. You will persevere to the end. What is the end? Either the end of your life on this world or when Jesus comes and takes us home in the rapture. Either way, you will make it till the end. You're going to make it. You will be there. When the roll is called up yonder, the song says, I'll be there. I'll be there. And so we look forward. We look forward to that day when Jesus Christ will come in the clouds to take his people home. We look forward. The old song says, oh, yes, I want to be in that number. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You can count on it. If you have named the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if his spirit, if his spirit stirs in your soul, then you can best believe that he was, is coming to take you home one day. Proper duration when we are found properly aligned with the Lord. Duration. You're going to make it all the way to the end. Finally, there's going to be proper communication. Proper communication. You see, when you're properly aligned with the Lord, you're going to want to you're going to want to talk to him more and more. When you're properly aligned with the Lord, you're going to have many things to say. When you're properly aligned with the Lord, there's going to be fellowship. And when you're properly aligned with the Lord, there's going to be some things that you're going to want him to say to you. He's going to have much to say to you. But you got to be properly aligned with him. In agreement with his plan. In agreement with his program. We must be found doing his will. His will and not our own, not our own at all. How are you? Where are you right now? Are you properly aligned with the Lord? Properly aligned with the Lord. Are you in a, in a place right now in your life where you can say, I am doing my father's business? Like Jesus said, when his parents found him in the temple, he says, wouldn't, wouldn't you know that I would be about my father's business? Are you, are you, can you say that you are busy doing the father's business? If you are, you're, 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 you are being properly aligned, doing what the Lord has called you out to do. That is properly, being properly aligned, properly aligned. Now, when we, you see, certain things happen in our life, as we said from the very beginning, things happen in this world, and sometimes we find ourselves sort of shrinking back, and sometimes things happen, and sometimes we find ourselves on the outside looking in and wondering, how did we get here? What happened that brought us to this place, to this situation? How did we get enter into this particular season uh, in our life? There are certain, there are several indicators that will tell you that you need divine realignment. There are certain things in your life that will tip you off, that will tell you, I need some work. I need some work done on me from the Lord in my life. Certain things. Number one, there, sometimes there is a restlessness. A restlessness. And that is nothing wrong. I don't believe there's anything wrong with having a spiritual restlessness where you want more from God. You want to hear him more. You want to see him more. You want to talk to him more. You want to be more. You want to do more. There's nothing wrong with having a level of spiritual restlessness in the Lord. But we must not allow that restlessness to take us in a wrong direction. Do not allow spiritual restlessness to bring you in a wrong direction. We must always be led to the Lord. When this spiritual restlessness arises within us, that is the time to pray. That is the time to call on the Lord. Lord, show me what to do. Show me what I need to do. Something is missing. Lord, 
You be the one to speak to me. Don't let me go on my own dictates. No, you don't want to go on your own dictates. You want to be led by the Spirit of God. You want to be led by the Spirit of God. Let's go to let's go to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs, uh, chapter number three, I believe it is. Proverbs chapter three. The scripture has just come to my heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Acknowledge him in all thy ways and he shall direct your path. So we must acknowledge him. We must trust in him in what we do. Don't lean to your own understanding when you become spiritually restless speak to the lord acknowledge him he will direct you and lead you in the place in the way that you need to go restlessness now there's another way that you will know that you are in need of spiritual realignment and that is recklessness recklessness and that is recklessness would be making bad decisions faulty decision making which leads to bad choices which leads to things going on and happening in your life uh that are not necessary and the bible says i believe it's in uh psalm psalm 19 psalm Psalm 19, at the end of the chapter, it says, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Presumptuous sins are those sins in my life that I know that are there that need work, but I refuse to bring them to the Lord. Things that I do that I know are sin, but I don't ask for his help. The verse before talks about cleanse thou me from secret faults. Secret faults. What is a secret fault? A secret fault, a secret fault is not something that you do on the sly. It's not something you do uh, and then try to hide. A secret fault is something that you are not aware of that is sinful. So the Lord, uh, so the psalmist is here saying in verses 12 and 13, he said, Lord, whatever it is, if there's something in my life that I don't even know that is sin, he says, Lord, bring it to light. Bring it to light. Show me what it is. Don't allow me to be reckless and live in such a way that I abandon you. And then he says, keep me back from those things that I know are wrong. Those two sides of sin, things that you don't know that are sin, things that you don't believe that are sin, that you continue to do, and those things that you know full well are sin. He says, the Bible says, to him that knoweth the good to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. And when we operate in that way, we are operating recklessly. When we do things that we know are wrong. And even if we step into the arena and continue to do things that are wrong that we don't even believe or think are wrong. Many times we don't know that things are wrong in our lives because of a lack of discernment. Discernment. We just, the Spirit of God is, has been unable to show us the wrong because we have not put ourselves in a place to receive instruction from Him. And so we don't know that something is wrong sometimes. Sometimes there's plain ignorance. Oh, yes. Sometimes we don't know something is wrong because we simply don't know that it is wrong. But once again, if you're saved, the Spirit of God in you is going to speak to you. But the level of your discernment, once again, the level of your discernment is going to be equal to the measure of your exposure to the Word of God. Your exposure to the Word of God. That will be the level the level of your uh, discernment. So you must make sure that you put yourself in a position to discern whether something is right or whether something is wrong. You don't want to continue. You don't want to continue in a sinful pathway. Probably you didn't know 
that was wrong. That is not what you want to do. That is not how uh, you want to uh, live out uh, your Christian life. That is not how you want to live it out. And so we must, we must make sure that we are living properly and not recklessly. The next way that you know that there is a need for spiritual realignment in your life is if there is resistance. Remember we said, we said restlessness, we said recklessness, and now resistance. If you are resisting, yes, yes, as a child of God, we can resist. The Bible says, do not quench the spirit of God. To quench the spirit of God is basically to, to resist him, to tell him no, to tell him not now. It is to put him off. And this action grieves him. It makes him sad. So we don't want to uh, find ourselves in a place of resisting the Lord. We don't want to find that. Because when we resist the Lord, it is a sure sign of pride. The Bible says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You don't want to resist the power of God. You don't want to resist the presence of God. You don't want to resist the leadership and direction of the Lord in your life. The Lord is trying to lead us in the proper direction. And we continue to tell the Lord that we know what we are doing. We have it under control. I know that's not what we say. We don't say those words outright. But by our actions, many times we are telling God, I got this. I know what I'm doing. I understand what needs to be done. And we put the Lord off. And that is resistance. That is resistance. We don't call it resistance, but it is resistance. It is, it is trying to behave and trying to get by independently from the Lord. And it cannot be done. It cannot be done. You cannot resist the Lord and be blessed by the Lord at the same time. It cannot happen. It cannot happen. So we have to be found in a place, in a pliable place, in a place where the Lord is able to bend us and mold us and shape us. We must not fight back against the power of God in our life. Yes, he's given us the power of choice, but we must choose to serve him, to follow him, to do the right thing. And we must not choose to resist. We must not choose to resist. The only one that we have, the, the, the only one that we're supposed to be resisting is the devil. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We resist the devil. We do not resist God. God is up to something. God is trying to bring about change in our life. God is trying to bring about some things in our life that we don't even know, that we don't even understand. But yet we stand many times and try to oppose him. Can't do it. Can't do it. Because that leads to the fourth way that you know that you need spiritual or divine realignment. And that is rebelliousness. We said restlessness, we said recklessness, we said resistance, and now it is rebelliousness. That is just heading out in your own direction to do your own thing your own way. And do not believe that a Christian, that a child of God cannot set out to do their own thing because they can. They can. Once again, it's not called rebellion. We, we don't call it rebellion. We we have other words for it. The Lord said, the Lord spoke to me. Uh, I, I, I'm doing it the Lord's way. And many times the Lord has not even told us to do it. But yet here we are doing it. We got to make sure that we don't become rebels without a cause. Rebels without a cause. The cause being our own. And if the cause is our own, there is no cause. We must do everything under the leadership and operation of the Holy Spirit. Paul and his companions, they wanted to go to a certain place and they were doing 
what they thought was the will of God. And they tried to get into the city. And the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit told Paul, no. But they're doing the Lord's will. But God said, no. The Holy Spirit said, no. And then they tried to go in another direction and go to another city. And the Holy Spirit told them again, no. Sometimes it's the right thing, but not the right time. Sometimes it's the right thing, but it's not the right place. And they knew from the Holy Spirit telling them no twice, they understood that this meant that they were to go to Macedonia. And this is where they went. And that's where God was able to use them the most. Because that was the place where the Lord wanted them to be. That was the place. Not the other two places. Not the people there that need the Lord also. But the Lord had a specific reason for them to be at Macedonia. And sometimes the Lord has a specific need for us to be in a certain place, in a specific place, but we put ourselves someplace else. And once again, the Lord cannot get all, you and I cannot get the full benefit, the full blessing of what the Lord is trying to do in our life if we find ourselves in the wrong place at the wrong time. We must follow the leading of the Lord. We must follow the leading of the Lord. It doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to us. It doesn't matter if it doesn't sound right, if it doesn't look right. If the Lord said do it, then it must be done. And we cannot force the Lord's hand because it sounds like it's something from the Lord. It sounds like it's right. It sounds like it's the right thing to do. It doesn't matter how it sounds. It doesn't matter how it feels. It doesn't matter how it looks. Is this what God said to do? If it's not, then you are out of alignment. If it's not, then you are no longer walking in alignment with the Lord. You are no longer walking in a, in a way, uh, in a straight way. You have put yourself out of the will of God. And no one wants to intentionally step out of the will of God. Now, if you go in, a, in another direction and do something else, listen, it's not saying that the Lord won't bless. It's not saying that everything is going to be all lost. It's not saying that everything that you do is going to be a failure. It's not that at all. But the most good can be done when we find ourselves in the place, doing the thing that the Lord has called us to do and not we ourselves. And that seems for me a very simple uh, principle. So there's restlessness, restlessness, recklessness, resistance, and a rebellion. Those things, if those things are happening in your life, then you need realignment, realignment. You have to come back into agreement with the Lord. You got to come back into agreement. So we have to make sure, make sure that we are found, make sure that we are found in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time. Sometimes it's not the right time. Sometimes it's just not the right time for you to be where you are. It's, it's, sometimes it's just not. We need to make sure that we are doing and being what the Lord wants us to do. And don't worry about what people do and what people say. Listen, you must follow the leading of the Lord. Not the leading of yourself. You must follow the leading of the Lord. Now, when you are in, when you are in need of spiritual realignment in your life, when you need to come back into cooperation and agreement with the Lord, Several things need to be done. And let's talk about these three things as we bring this to a, to a close tonight. Several things need to be done before, uh, before you can find yourself in proper alignment. Number one, there needs to be repentance. Oh, repentance. Repentance is a change of mind where you say, Lord, I don't want to go in this direction anymore. Lord, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to completely turn around and turn away from what I'm doing and go in the direction of you, Lord. I'm not, no, I'm no longer going to be doing my will. It is your will that I want more than anything. Repent, repent, repent. Re the Bible, listen, 
sometimes we don't even know, as I said earlier, sometimes we don't even realize that we are doing something that is off kilter. Sometimes we don't even realize that we are doing something that is off center. Sometimes we don't even realize it. Sometimes our prayer needs to be, Lord, show me. Show me, Lord. Give me the discernment. Lord, I repent. I repent of not even realizing that I was in the wrong. I repent of not even realizing that I was uh, in a wrong place at the wrong time. Lord, I repent. I repent. I turn around. I turn my back on what I was doing. Next thing that we're going to find is necessary when we realize that we need spiritual uh, realignment. There needs to be a remembrance. Repentance and remembrance. You got to come back as the as the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says, when he realized where he was, when he realized that he was he was now eating pig food, something below him, something that was beneath him, the Bible says he came to himself. He came to himself. He came to his right mind. We need to remember who we are. When you realize that you need realignment, you need to repent and remember who you are. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. You have certain privileges because you are a child of the king. There are certain things that you must do. There are certain things that you must be about if you are a child of the king. You must remember who you are in Jesus. The Bible says that we are a chosen generation. Hear that we are chosen. We are a royal priesthood. You are royal. You are a a holy generation. You are set apart. You are a peculiar people. You belong to him and him alone. And you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is who we are. Remember who you are. If you find yourself out of alignment with the Lord, I am a child of the King. You have to also remember who he is, who he is. He is our leader. The Lord is the one who has the controls. My wife likes to use the phrase, uh, Jesus, take the wheel from an old song from several years back. We need to let the Lord take the wheel of our life. Let the Lord handle it. Let the Lord be in absolute control. He is our pilot. He's not our co-pilot. No, 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 no. There's some bumper stickers that used to say, God is my co-pilot. No, he's not. No, God is not anybody's co-pilot. No, God is the pilot. He is the oarsman. He is the captain. God is in charge. No co-anything. You want the Lord to lead you. Know who he is. You got to remember that. You are not in charge. He is in charge. That's why we need that spiritual realignment. The third thing that we need, the third thing that we need when we find ourselves in need of spiritual realignment, we said repentance, we said remembrance, and there needs to be a refocusing, a refocusing. And this is actually probably the most important thing of everything that I'm going to say tonight. This refocusing, you need to refocus on Jesus Christ. You need to refocus your sights, your eyes, your attention on the cross of Jesus Christ. It's the cross. It's at the cross. It's at the cross where all blessings come from. The Bible says here in Psalm 84, 11, it says, no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. No good thing. Every good gift comes from above. Every good gift, and we know from above, we're talking, when we talk about from above, we're talking about heavenly things. We're talking about divine things. But once again, every single blessing that we have is because of what Jesus did on the cross. Nobody would go to heaven if Jesus didn't die on the cross. 
Nobody would have any access. Nobody would have any access to any good thing that comes from anywhere if Jesus had not first died on the cross. And so we need to refocus our hearts, our minds, our energies, every single fiber in us. We need to refocus it on Jesus Christ and the cross. You can never separate Jesus Christ from the cross. That's where the victory was won. That's where our victory was won. That's why we don't have to work and fight and struggle for our victory. Our victory has been won at the cross. The cross. Refocus. See Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. See Jesus. Without him, we can do nothing. Without him, as the song says, we would surely fail. We need Jesus. See him and you will see your life come into proper alignment. See the cross and you will see your life begin to turn. Put Jesus in his proper place in your life and you will find yourself, as we said, Proper elevation, proper revelation, proper maturation, proper insulation, proper duration, proper communication. All when you begin to put Jesus in his proper place in your life. Refocus. See Jesus. See the cross. See him. Without him, without him, all is lost. Amen. All is lost. So I don't know where you are tonight. I don't know where this night uh, finds you. I don't know if you're drifting. Uh, I don't know if you're drawing close. I don't know if you're, I don't know if you find yourself fading away. I don't know where you are as you're listening to this word. I don't know, but I know that the Lord wants you to draw close. I know the Lord wants you to draw closer. I know the Lord wants you to go deeper in him. So many distractions, so many different things that are around that will take our hearts and our minds away from the Lord. We need to dive in. We need to dive in and we need to make sure that we are properly aligned, properly aligned with the Lord. Do you need spiritual realignment? Repent. Repent. Remember. Refocus. And then rejoice. Rejoice. The Bible says rejoice for the steps of a righteous man. They are ordered by God. Verse number 12 here, Psalm 84, verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed. Blessed is the man that trusts in thee. That's talking about faith. 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 Allow God to mold you and shape you into the man or woman that he wants you to be. Allow the Lord to work in your life. Now, I know as we walk with the Lord, it's not something that we, it's, it's not something that we say easily that we resist the Lord. But yes, God's people do resist him. We know this is true. We know God's people do resist him because he would not have written 2 Chronicles 7.14 if his people were unable to resist him. He said, if my people, he says, my people, he says, if my people who are called by my name, he says, shall humble themselves. Come up off where you are. Come up off your high horse. Stop doing what you want to do. Stop doing what you think is right. He says, humble yourself. Come down, get low. He says, humble yourself and pray. And he says, seek my face and turn. That's repentance. That's what we were talking about. He says, turn from your what ways? He says, wicked ways. Yes, my people who are called by my name, he says, have wicked ways. 
and they're in a direction now that they don't need to be. They're heading in a wrong direction. And he says in 714, turn around. Turn around and come back to me. Turn around and get yourself in proper alignment. That's what he's saying. You need to be realigned with the master. Realigned. So you don't cause any more havoc in your life. He says, turn from your wicked ways. And then he says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sin, he says, and I will heal your land. It is a plea. It is a cry by the Lord telling his people to turn from their wickedness and start walking uprightly so that he can give you every good thing. I will forgive you. I will heal your land. But we got to come clean. We got to come clean. Here's what it says. Here's what it says in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter one. And these, listen, these words, th these words are not written to those who don't know the Lord. These words are written to his people. These words are written to us. We who know the Lord. He says, wash you. Uh, Isaiah chapter one and verse number 16, he says, wash you or wash yourself, make yourself clean. Put away the evil of your doings. Once again, talking about the wickedness of his people, the need to be in proper alignment. He says, he says, come away from the evil of your doings uh, from before mine eyes. That's the Lord says, I see what you're doing. I'm watching you. I know. He says, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fathers, plead for the widow. And then he says, come now, just come on now, come now, let us reason together. Let's talk about this, fellowship, fellowship. He says, let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins, once again, he's talking about his people, his people. He says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. That's talking about forgiveness. That's talking about pardon. He says, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. That's what the Lord wants. But in order for, to make that happen, we have to turn. In order to make that happen, we have to repent, we have to refocus, and we have to remember. Remember who we are, God's people. Remember who he is. He is the Lord. We have to go his way, his way. He says in verse number 19, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Once again, if we do what the Lord says, there is blessing to follow. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly, who are in proper alignment. I will withhold nothing. But he says, if you refuse and rebel, remember we were talking about rebellion. He says, if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. No blessing. No blessing. No favor. The enemy will come and he will take us. And he, the Bible says that he is seeking, the enemy is seeking someone to devour. And the Lord may give the enemy free hand in our life, not to destroy us, but to chastise us, to discipline us. Yes, the devil, yes, the Lord can use the enemy to discipline his children. Be the enemies to discipline his children throughout the Old Testament when they would do something wrong and, and they would go into captivity and then they would cry out and the Lord would send a deliverer and then they would and then they would go back into a defiance against the Lord and then the Lord would send a deliverer. We must make sure that we don't run this cycle in our lives. If you need spiritual realignment in your life, cry out to God. Cry out to God. He's ready. 
He's willing to receive you right now. But we have to be willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we know that without you, we could do nothing, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know. Lord, we know that as we find ourselves uh, serving you and doing what you want, Lord, we know that there is blessing attached to it. Lord, we don't want to be in a place in our lives, Lord, where we are allowing the enemy to have his way in our lives. Lord, we want to do as what you have called us out to do. Lord, we want to be properly aligned with you in every facet of our life, Lord Jesus. Lord, we don't want to go in our direction. We don't want to do what we want to do. As much as we talk about your will, Lord Jesus, Lord, we want, many times we find ourselves not doing it your way. Lord, we give you full, we give you full operation in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, have your way. Do with us as you please. We leave ourselves open to you even right now. Lord, realign us. We give ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. We want to bless the Lord. We want to bless the Lord. We thank the Lord for, for what he's doing. We thank the Lord for his word. Uh, we thank the Lord for his people. We thank you. Uh, we thank all those who are who listen, who watch, uh, who support us. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and you can subscribe there. Uh, you can also go to Spreaker.com. Uh, and you can also, and you will find several, as we said at the outset, several podcasts. There are uh, seven podcasts, actually, uh, that you will find on Spreaker that we produce uh, that will be beneficial to your spiritual life. Uh, you can also, uh, you can now go to our our new uh, Facebook page, uh, the Bible Speaks Live Facebook page, and you can like that once again. Uh, so we are, once again, we are attempting to do what the Lord has called us out to do. We are trying to make the word available to all those who will hear. And we are all about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are not here to try and to, uh, to dilute the word. We're not here to try and make people feel good, so to speak. We are here to speak the truth in love, we are here to say it the way it was meant to be said. Amen. So we want to thank God for uh, the opportunity to be able to spread his word. Uh, it is always uh, an, an, a pleasure to be able to open up his word and to speak his word. So we want to thank you for being with us. And don't forget, tomorrow night we'll be right back here uh, uh, with the Cut to Get Right Wednesday night Bible study. Another, we'll have another Bible study that we pray will be riveting, that will hold your attention and will teach you some things about the Lord, maybe that you did not know before. Amen. So we thank you for joining us and we'll be right back here tomorrow. I mean, rather, we'll be back here next week, next week, next Tuesday night for the Bible Speaks Live. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes and we'll see you next time. God bless you.